Around the animal kingdom, whether it's monkeys, lizards, worms, bears, whatever, you will never find uh, differentials in luxury, accommodation, uh, prospects, opportunities, education. Animals all seem to be the same all around the world, whether you find a, a pigeon in New York or a pigeon in London or a pigeon in China, the pigeon pigeons. But when you come to human beings, um, we are too clever for our own good. And we realized, uh, the powerful amongst us a long time ago, that if you terrify people enough, you can get them to do what you want. And uh, when you control people, this works out very well for your mathematical construct, your genetics. Uh, you will probably have a lot of children with a lot of women, uh, if you're very powerful and murderous and uh, good at controlling people. And the children you have will then have those traits, and then that will spread and spread and spread. And um, tyranny, dictatorship, uh, brutalization, savagery, atavism, these things are all good for your genes. They're good for the mathematics of continuing yourself. And uh, most of the people you see in society, and I believe this is every society, they've even done scientific experiments to prove this, um, are interested primarily in um, their immediate health, their immediate um, comfort, and their ability to have ch child after child after child. And um, this is why most people are happy with the two or three party political system, left, right, center. Uh, they're happy to go to work. They're happy to hand over their balls and their freedom to the government. They're happy to be, you know, stamped, governed, registered, uh, searched, um, thrown in jail, um, regulated, because it, within this framework, this greedy, um, predatory, social Darwinistic framework, it's easy to have lots of children. Um, here in Great Britain, if you go to school and you pay attention uh, to what the government you know, curriculum is and you go to university, you then um, get a job and you do as you're told by your boss, you will have that paycheck or the electronic transfer of money to your account, which will then allow you to meet another fellow um, human being, a woman, to then have two kids, three kids, five kids. It's not difficult to have a family and um, keep on working if you don't have a, a social conscience, if you don't have a sentience engine which is capable of um, understanding concepts such as freedom or the meaning of life or the search for the meaning of life or that we're all equal, that we all have the opportunity to live without tyranny. If you don't have the ability to think outside the, the narrow mathematical genetic construct of 2.4 children and everything's fine, then you will view people who do care about these things as crazy. Uh, you will um, <laughs> want them crucified, as people did get crucified in the past. You might want them assassinated, as many people in America right now are calling for Julian Assange to be assassinated. Or on a much lower level, uh, you might be someone who makes films, and you put up with vast amounts of hatred and um, really ignorant, um, brutal comments uh, regarding you know, rape, murder, assault, uh, torture, I get it all, you know, it's every, every type. And what these are is the, and we can call them mediocre, it's the mediocre minds that do not like the fact that there is always going to be an amount of people in society that see through the bullshit and believe in some, a much higher power. We believe in something much more beautiful than what we currently have. And I recently did a shout out on Facebook asking the question, civilization, is it worth the price? And most people say, well, maybe, maybe, but my opinion is that civilization is not worth the price. Um, maybe when the first child got indoctrinated to join the army and then had his body blown to pieces, that's when civilization stopped being worth it. Maybe when the first caveman put his um, fence around his cave and said, this is mine, and found other cavemen stupid enough to believe him, maybe that's when civilization stopped being worth it. Maybe when um, the United States dropped two nuclear bombs on Japan into residential areas, maybe that's when civilization stopped being worth it. Or maybe the current rates of people dying from malnutrition or 
the rates of girls whose first experience of sex is rape makes civilization not worth it. Maybe the the media, the, the, the grotesquerie of our media and the, the treatment of any in, um, different thinker, maybe that makes civilization not worth it. But I just want to maybe try and explain in my own words why I don't think civilization is worth it. Um, I wasn't there. I wasn't alive two million years ago. But from what we know, we did live in small egalitarian hunter-gatherer uh, societies that roamed around, had problems with the weather, with saber-toothed tigers, with each other. But there wasn't um, a person asking you for tax. There wasn't the case where you were born into poverty, whereas others were born into luxury. The small tribes understood perfectly well that they had to reward um, sociable traits and um, be very against um, antisocial traits. So like greed, the lust for power, the desire to dominate others, to keep all the kill for yourself. If you've got a gazelle and you keep it all for yourself, people will remember that in the tribe. And next time you're hungry, you won't get any gazelle meat. But in our civilization these days, the, the worst traits of man, greed, power, the lust for power, being a machine, er, 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 and not having any psychological or spiritual bigger thoughts about life, these are wonderfully rewarded. You will go far, son, as long as you work hard, keep your heads down, don't question authority, marry a good woman who believes the same, and have those kids, and then keep the cycle going. We're now at a stage in civilization which in my opinion is not worth it, where we can't keep it going any longer. Um, <laughs> with the advent now of instant communication, um, I feel that if people aren't depressed a bit each day, don't be depressed all day, but if you're not depressed a bit each day by what's happening, I don't think you're paying attention properly. And um, with the instant spread of communication, we, we can see what's happening to the planet, what's happening to the animals, what's happening to the species, what's happening to the rivers and the Amazon, the Belamontes, the Chinese, the, 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 the big dam projects there with the deforestation, with, um, let's look at more man-made ones, um, the continued pumping of depleted uranium into tribal areas in Afghanistan and Iraq, and the ongoing genocides around the world, American, British and Israeli support for dictatorships, whilst at the same time saying that other dictators are bad, it's too much bullshit and it's too much madness. And um, really, it's, it's time now, guys. Um, I, I've said this before, but maybe I should um, reiterate this again, that um, the first thing you need to do is to withdraw all your financial support from the current system. If you agree with me that it's not worth it, um, don't pay the tax and try and, um, you know, don't, don't support them in any material way. And I know some taxes are unavoidable, kind of. But in terms of income tax, the very big one, in terms of local council tax, that's another big one. You shouldn't be giving um, control freaks more control. And money is energy, and energy can create control. So don't give them your money. And um, as well, um, I struggle up here in, um, in Britain because there's not that many people uh, who are, I guess, as crazy as me doing the exact same thing I do. So it does get a bit lonely. And... Um, some people commented like, oh, you're all by yourself in your videos because, well, there's not that many people who are as crazy as I that will do this. And I don't want to incriminate, you know, uh, my partner or close people who don't want to maybe be on YouTube to suffer the levels of hatred and abuse from small, mediocre minded people around the world. But um, where am I going with this? I'm kind of ranting. Oh, yes. Um, how do I put this? Um, if you like my films and you really like what they represent, if you like me as a filmmaker and you would like to see these films carry on, uh, could you please donate a little bit in the link below on my channel, not my channel, my website, um, as much as you can or as little as you can. And again, it's 100% voluntary. So if you don't want to donate, don't. And if you do, do. Um, and I just want to say thank you to everyone that supports this. And it's going gonna, it's gonna to continue, of course, but I do need to, to pay for food and transport and trains and, and shit like that. And, um, yeah. Anyway, uh, I, before I forget as well, um, I found a video that we shot in a bar in Rio, and it's my friend David when I was traveling with him, who said, oh, Charlie, to, to answer all the haters, let's, um, let's put a video about, about you, and I'll talk about you. So, without further ado... Here's David on me. And apologies for the bad audio. It was in a busy bar in Rio. Anyway. The movie business, baby. Who is Charlie? 
Charlie Beach and what's it like travelling with him? That's, they're fair questions, I reckon, given you're watching a video about us travelling around. Raise the volume. Okay, is that better? Can you, can you see the thing moving around? Okay, who is Charlie Beach and what's it like travelling around with him? I don't think it's possible to express what a human being is like on a medium like a camera through a film. But I can say that I'm very privileged to have, I'm very privileged to have him as a friend. And uh, he's quite an incredible guy to travel around with actually, because most people, like, and I count myself amongst most people, have highs and lows and kind of bad moments and better moments. He doesn't seem to have that. He's just like, insert a coin, and he's a pop up human being, just kind of like is on from the moment he wakes up to the moment he goes to sleep. And what you see is what you get. And I know some of you love that and some of you hate that, but he's a very genuine character. And um, there's no kind of misrepresentation or attempt to be anybody else. And genuinely, he meets everybody with a great, loving, open vibe. And uh, I couldn't ask more from a travel partner or a friend in this world, really. And I'm sure that, in some sense, will come across, even though you know it's hard to give a sense of a moment or a human being or anything profound through any kind of medium other than sitting with somebody but sitting with Charlie is a great thing to do and if any of you ever get the chance to do that then I would recommend it. Be, be nice to him man because a lot of you give him a lot of shit unwarranted and if you give him a bit of a space to be himself I think you'll be fascinated by the guy because most people are I'm sorry guys because I know most people are watching this but most people are mundane and boring and have yet to find their kind of stroke of interest in the world. You're all looking around for it, following other people, trying to... Charlie's not like that, man. He's unique, one of a kind, and he treats people really, really well, with a lot of kindness and a lot of respect, and uh, that's not something I consistently do. So, uh, yeah, he's a fun guy, and um, I hope you enjoy watching him clown around as much as I do, because I really do. <laughs>